G'day, I wanted to show you how to send or prepare a Google Earth image and send that to Heenan Doherty so we can give you a quote or we can discuss your, your project. So the first thing you need to do is go to your browser and just down, like if you haven't got Google Earth, and download it. Um, following that process, then, uh, and then open the application. So that's what we're going to do now. And um, once you've uh, opened that, and as you can see, you know, we use Google Earth Pro. Um, it costs us about $400 a year. And big difference is that it gives you the capacity to make some movies with it. And also, but the biggest thing that we look at is um, the screen resolution is actually printed. So uh, when you do, uh, when you use the free version, you don't get anywhere near as high a resolution when you save an image or print it. That's the big difference. You can have a look at through Google Earth by using this tool tips if you're new to it, and uh, sometimes it updates um, new features and whatnot as well. So we'll get out of there for the moment. So head straight over to your search bar here and just pop in there the name of the locality of your property. So. It's a good place to start. You can put in your address, but in some parts of the world, um, particularly in rural areas, uh, we uh, find that you um, can't necessarily go straight to your place. So just put in the locality. So we'll do that. And it says Epilock Victoria already, so we'll go to that. And it'll take you straight there. Now you've got that little icon there. Um, which in our case is something we don't want. Um, and what we'll do is get rid of that. And what we'll now do is just zoom into the property a bit. So you should know where your property is. Just have a bit of a look around. You can see some of the features. If you need to put roads on there or any sort of labels, then pop one of those on. Um, as you can see, that puts some of the roads on. It doesn't have every road, but it has quite a lot. Just zoom in, there's our place just there. Take a look at the age of the imagery, and that's down the bottom here. It tells you the image date, and it's 2002 in our case, which is quite a while ago. It's also got the uh, projection information here. It can be longitude or latitude, and in this case, it's UTM data. Um, it also has the, the um, altitude that the cursor is at um, across the map. It's not super accurate, but it's not a bad guide. Right, now the purpose of this exercise is to generate a boundary um, map of this place. I'm just going to get rid of that road there. And what we'll do is we'll go to up to the menu items here and click Add Path. So once you've done that, little window will appear. First thing to do is to type in the name of the property. And then underscore, and then the name of the layer that you're putting on. So we're calling this a boundary layer. Now, what we'll also do is change the color of this. So I'll make this uh, red, okay? And then I wanna make it a nice thick line. So I'm gonna increase that to two pixels. Now, my tendency straight away was to go to okay. And in spite of the fact I've used this for years, I keep doing that. Um, don't do that at this point. If you do do it, um, I'll show you what happens. It goes to here. Now, if it goes to here um, by doing that, what you can do is just um, click right-hand click on it and then just go to Get Info or Properties, I think it says in Windows. So you do that and then you come back to the same window. You have to have that window open in order to do the editing of the, uh, of the map. All right, so let's go to the, one of the corners and there's one that I see right there. And I'll just touch on the, on the map with my cursor. So you can go, so just drag across to the next corner. Wherever you put these nodes, a line follows the line style that you uh, defined earlier. So we'll just go around to here. Now you'll stop a bit earlier than, than right on the end because if you stop, if you go to here, it won't draw the line. So just stop to the end and then grab that little one and then just go and then it'll close it up. Now I'm not really happy with where that is. That needs to change just a bit. So I can put that there. If I want to put more nodes in, then I can do. I can do that as well, right? So you can do all of these things. Or if I want to get rid of that node, I can delete it as well, just by hovering on it. So that's the, basically the story. Now, now you click OK, 
Now go over here to the Places menu. Now click, um, right click again, and you get this menu here. And now what you can do here is directly email that out of the program. It'll go straight to you, whatever your default email uh, browser or whatever they're called is. Um, and then either that or you can go to Save Place. So that's what we're going to do here. So Save Place. Now you can put that boundary name um, or that file name directly into whatever um, file manager you want. Keep it, keep it, uh, or any folder you want, keep it as a KMZ file. You can also change it to KML. There's a bit more data in a KMZ or KMZ for our American clients. All right, so just click Save. Now I'm going um, to exit out of here. I'll close that off. And what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to delete that for the purposes of my next um, exercise for you here. And I'll delete that one. Right. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, close Google Earth. And I'm going to go to the File Manager. And I'm going to go to my Clients folder, which is where I had that there. Now there's that there's that KMZ file. Now if you, have, you can record it here. Now of course if you're doing an email, then you can just attach that to your email and send it to us. Um, but if I send you a file in the future, then you can simply go to your email or wherever the file is and download it and then come to here and then just open it from here and this is what will happen it'll come straight into google earth and then when it's in there it'll go straight to your property you can see it's come up here and it'll go straight there Right. Now, if we ever do any design work or catchment areas or any sort of to and fro uh, revision work, that's the way we generally send it. We can do all sorts of things like that. What we can also do, and I'll show you here while, we've, while we're at to the whole Google Earth thing, is I'll just get rid of that, is let's have a, have a look at um, this property. We can just click on here, come across Bass Strait to Tasmania, to a client's property we've got down there. Now well, that takes us straight there. Now, once we're there, and we can prepare this for you, um, is what we can do is put a topographic map over the top of that. And uh, here you can see one that we've taken from the, um, from the government. And this is what's called a topographic cadastral map. Now with that, I'll just uh, zoom this up so it's not oblique. Once we're in there, we can then um, do an overlay of your contours and, uh, and your boundary, depending on the data that's available. So here's this property here. We wanted to get a bit of a full catchment. So what I did was one, marked in the boundary, just as I showed you there. And two was we marked in all of the contour lines in a yellow color because there was good contrast. Now what I'm gonna do is take away that original overlay and that leaves behind um, quite a decent contour map. Not too many contours on this property, it's quite flat, and these are government contours, which are at best between five to 10 meters, you know, uh, 20 to 30 feet plus in interval. So you, you don't get that much. But for me, um, it gives me a reasonable idea of the shape of the property, which helps us, um, after we've listened to your brief, give you a good price on what the um, on what our services will cost whether it's an online ehd style consultancy or where we do a, a site visit and uh, on-site uh, based consultancy so i'll show you another example of where we've done this um, on a on a smaller property uh, which one are we going to look at uh, like this one here just to give you another indication of how this process works um, with the different data that's available. So in this case we're in Gippsland and not a bad image and you can see when you go oblique on here you do get a bit of a shape of the land um, and for people like me who've done so many designs um, I can read that landscape pretty easily and get a, a very good idea of what can and can't happen. The elevation information that's in here helps me as well 
and um, it certainly also helps when you have a really high uh, high uh, quality resolution high resolution image as we do here this is a 2012 image so it's quite recent and quite good now on this one uh, we've got the boundary placed I'll just make straighten that up again as well when you go navigating from place to place Google Earth uh, tends to go oblique on you so it's just the way it goes and then what we'll do is we'll overlay onto that the uh, government data and so you can see now I can get a lot of this information off online and uh, then I can quite simply overlay it onto here and then get a true shape of the property again these are 10 meter contours but that's fine for what I need to, to work with as a starting point. If we determine that you need a survey, well, then we'll get one later on. We'll get your quote and we'll um, sort that out through various providers. But that's basically the process. And uh, so once we've done that, um, even this one here, I can send that to you now. I can just uh, go through the same process and email it to you or save it as a place and uh, then just email it and it'll come up on the screen and. Uh, you just click on it and it'll open it straight into Google Earth with all of this uh, imagery there. All right, well, thanks very much for today. And uh, we look forward to getting your inquiries. And if you do have any, any troubles, well, then don't hesitate at all to give us a contact and we'll, uh, and we'll help you out. All the best.